Hello and welcome to the first episode of Now You Know. We're excited to bring you stories that connect us as people. To kick us off, we pay homage to the city of Melbourne with Lord Mayor Sally Cap. Joining us in the kitchen is Zion Walkan Tenda. And talking all things music is Brother Asante and Chris Gill at your favorite record store, Northside Records. Whatever you do, do not move a muscle because we have a big show for you and let's get started. It's always so exciting and such a privilege to meet incredible women leaders such as the Lord Mayor of Melbourne, Sally Cap. Recently, we stopped by at Melbourne Town Hall to learn a bit more about her work. Sally is the first directly elected female Lord Mayor of the City of Melbourne. We invited the Lord Mayor to Pole Pole, and this is how it went. Now we're going to get to know Lord Mayor Sally Kelp in 30 seconds. Are you ready? Let's try. Let's try. We can only try. Okay. First question coffee or tea? I'm a tea girl. Tea girl? What I don't kind? drink coffee. Me neither. I don't drink coffee. It's a hard thing to be the Lord Mayor of the coffee capital of the world, uh, (laughs) but I do attend a lot of cafes and I drink all sorts of tea. What are your favourite strange food combinations? I'm mad on chilli and hot things, Mm -hmm. Uh, but the weirdest combination that used to be in my sandwiches when I went to school was peanut butter, pickled onions and mayonnaise, and I still love it today. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) That's all right. People are different. <laughs> all good. Uh, which song can you listen to all day? Oh, gosh, I love music as well. And I'm a bit of a traditionalist. I really could listen to anything by Queen, uh, anything from Robbie Williams. I'm really giving my age away here, aren't I? Elton John. Uh, but I recently saw the Foo Fighters, and given the news about um, Taylor Hawkins, I'm really into listening to Foo Fighters over and over again. All right, well, since you're a music person, what is the soundtrack to your life right now? Right now? Right now. With everything that's going on. I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control and I think I like it. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't think I can go far beyond that. We that was awesome. Not be flat like me, but that's <laughs> a song that comes to mind with my life at the moment. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Last question. Um, what is the best perk you have ever enjoyed in a job? Perk? Perk. Mm. Well, I had a role uh, that was called Agent General and nobody really knew what that meant. I felt like I was in an Austin Powers movie. But one of the best things about that role was that I was a very junior diplomat in London where they have all sorts of amazing events for diplomats, including things like the Easter banquet at Mansion House, which has been going for 690 years now. And even though I had to sit at the back of the room near the toilets in the kitchen, I absolutely loved being there as part of the pageantry uh, and ceremony of it all. But I have to say really my best perk is that when I was on the board of the Collingwood Football Club, I got to go to the game every single week and I loved it. Loved it. Oh, my God. That, that other job sounds so cool. It's just like you kind of sit in the back and you go, this is really cool. They yeah. can't see me. I can see all yeah, of them exactly. and it's so amazing. Just picking up from the, the job thing, what's the what's the worst job you've ever had since that was kind of one of the best oh, ones? Oh, gosh, yeah. Well, my job career goes all the way back to pre-computers. And I used to have to do research as a young lawyer Uh, on things called microfiche where you sat in front of a big machine you had to put a slide in and then look at that and if you didn't find what you wanted you have to go and find another slide and it was so tedious you were often known to fall asleep in the microfiche room did you fall asleep often and (laughs) uh, it really was so tedious so if I had to be on microfiche duty I knew it was a very long day ahead Uh, maybe the last one but you being young um, your job at Scoop's Ice Cream Parlor <laughs> in Camberwell. Like I, I imagine myself when I was, you know, when I was younger, I had part-time jobs and things like that. I was in retail. Yes. So I'm like, ice cream parlor? What was that like? How good. <laughs> you know, uh, so much better. 14 years old uh, at an ice cream parlor. It's 
heaven. What do you say? It's like the fox in the hen house. Uh, and I tasted every single bit of ice cream. I mean, I had to because mm. I had to be able to give recommendations. Uh, I became an expert on the chocolate dipping of the soft serve. Uh, and it really taught me a lot about responsibility in terms of being on time, doing my work. It was great for those life experiences of dealing with customers and, and sometimes difficult customers as well. Even in an ice cream uh, parlour, you sometimes get difficult customers. Uh, and it really gave me a new appreciation of independence because the money that I earned was my money to use. And that was a, you know, I think they are really important life lessons and life skills that started uh, in the ice cream parlour for me. Yeah. But I do need to tell you, it took me a long time to go back to ice cream. Yeah. I completely OD'd on ice cream <laughs> during my time there and I haven't really eaten a lot of ice cream no. since. So that gives you an indication of what I spent most of my time doing. Not eating ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's so cool. In a mind of a six-year-old mm. on a show-and-tell day, yes. you are there standing up yes. and they go, does it, what exactly does Emnea do? Yeah. What's your answer? Well, it's such a good question and it, there's so much variety. It's from meeting people uh, who are part of our community yeah. through community groups. Last week we just had all of the presidents of the Residents Association, Association into Town Hall to talk about local issues. And then I might be meeting with the Prime Minister or the Premier. It could be talking about uh, issues that are core services like rubbish uh, which is a really important yeah. thing that we do to big city shaping projects like Green Line, which is the rejuvenation of the North Bank of the Yarra. And the variety is something I really enjoy and it's every day. So I, I do feel so lucky. But my best thing about being Lord Mayor is the connection to our community and our city. I can literally walk out onto our streets and see the jobs and services and programs we're providing. I can always see the things that we need to fix and do better at, but I always get a thrill from being able to speak with our locals, um, whether they're residents, students, visitors, workers, and feel that connection to our capital city. Mm -hmm. And it's quite electrifying. I can imagine. In a role that you play as the Lord Mayor, it's quite significant. Everyone knows you. And, and I'm wondering, like, you know, when you go out, as Sally Cab, what do you miss the most about just being Sally Cab and not Lord Mayor? Being if naughty? Anything. I can't be naughty anymore. <laughs> I, I used to jaywalk a lot and, you know, not following the lights. So I don't do that anymore and I have got a fine for doing that in the past. Uh, being silly, it's hard for me to be silly. I still try and very much be as much of me as I can be, but I'm in... A very responsible position and they need to make sure that as a leader I'm projecting uh, the right things uh, for our city and our people and yep. um, so I'm much less naughty than I used to be when I say naughty that's not really bad things um, but just keeping a check on myself uh, is important of course of course and on green line I know it's your passion yes. project and it's coming up and it's exciting do you want to tell us a little bit more about it yeah well, look, it was a vision in 2018 when I came into Town Hall as Lord Mayor, but I think it's even more relevant now that we've gone through this enormous shock of the pandemic period. And it's really a big city shaping project that says here in Melbourne, even though we may be the city with the most days in lockdown, we haven't been deterred from having really big visions and, and really being ambitious and trying to inspire our community. And so Green Line is a... Uh, four kilometre promenade, continuous promenade from Birrarungma to the Balti Bridge. It takes in amazing places that are very special to our traditional owners uh, and bringing those stories alive. It, it goes through places that are relevant to our more recent history, maritime history and immigration. Uh, and it takes us through wonderful parks down to our rivers where we'll reinstall native plantings. There will also be places for culture and performance and activations as well as some hospitality along the way. And it's a six metre wide promenade continuously running from Birrarangma to the Balti and to celebrate nature in place. And we're so excited that it's really going to rejuvenate the city. If, you know, if you didn't know, 
about your Lord Mayor? There you go. Now you know. But if you have any any last words that you want to share with, you know, the Melbourne community, the Victorian, any, like, you know, people out there who are looking at Melbourne and how Melbourne is thriving, what do you want to say? Feel free to tell Thank the you. people you Okay. Can. Well, look, there were two, two things that I'd love to share. And um, one of the reasons I was keen to do this program with you uh, was because I've really learned, particularly during my experience as Lord Mayor, that it's important that we're curious, um, that we don't make judgments about people, that we ask lots of questions and we take the time to get to know people because uh, that respect for individuality uh, is absolutely key to us being a more inclusive society. That sense of belonging comes uh, from being part of a community that respects uh, individuality and values everything that we individually bring to our community. So that's been super important for me and it's one of the reasons why I love coming to community and cultural festivals is because it gives me the opportunity to learn more, to be able to ask questions and I'm so grateful uh, to uh, all of the cultural groups that are so generous and take the time in sharing culture here in Melbourne. I think it's an absolutely distinctive part of who we are and um, the more curious we are and the more we take time to get to know people, um, the better off we'll be. And it's been one of the best parts of, of my role. And then the second thing I wanted to say is Melbourne is coming back. It's been the toughest two years in my professional career. I'm sure it's the same for everybody. It's been an enormous pandemic shock. But the resilience, it's an overused word, I know, but how else can we describe the incredible way that Melburnians bounce back from every single lockdown. And we're in bounce back 6.5, I call it, up to the Omicron situation in January. And people aren't coming back in a hesitant way. Every single trader, whether it's hospitality or retail, every entertainer, every cultural destination is coming out bigger and better than before. And I'm so grateful for that. And then for everybody that's coming into town, our foot traffic now on the weekends is up around the 90% of pre-pandemic levels and I think we can really feel that undercurrent of energy. And then midweek we're really consistently seeing more and more workers come back regularly and we are getting our mojo back in Melbourne and that really speaks to everybody's efforts to survive and now to thrive. And we are proud Melburnians and I just think it's a wonderful thing to reflect on after such a difficult time. So thank you for having me on today and for being able to share some of the things about myself but, but also about what we love about Melbourne. Absolutely. Thank you so much for making the time to, you know, come and hang out with us. We know a little bit more about you as a person and, you know, we respect the work that you do and we're proud to be Melbournians. So come on, people. Melbourne is bustling. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Doris. And we're out.